have a number to appoint tonight. 5A is the appointments by the mayor is to the Perry House County Airport Authority. And Mr. Gerald has been recommended for that position. He currently serves on the airport as chairman. 5B are mayor and council joint appointments. We have one position as a joint appointment with the Perry House County Airport Authority, and that's Mr. Graham Lavender, is the recommendation from the Airport Authority. Downtown Development Authority of the City of Perry, they have recommended Ms. Rebecca Moody to serve in that position. And the Housing Authority of the City of Perry has recommended that Ms. Phyllis Ingram serve as their resident commissioner for the Housing Authority. Any questions about those appointments? I agree. We assist and give input to my understanding that we will have at least one citizen. Is that right, Ms. Warren? Yes, sir. One person would be wanting to call in, so we will take that. Item 7 is a review of the minutes. 8 will be old business. Item 9 will be any matters that, or 9A will be any matters that we have here in this work session. I don't think there was anything from the previous council on the work session yesterday. Was there, Mr. Gilmore? No, sir. So 9B1 and 2 are bids. Bid number 2021-17 is the Thompson Road Water and Sewer Extension. Mr. Worthington? Thank you, Mayor. This project is to extend water and sewer from Thompson Road up to the property for the proposed RV park. We followed all of our standard bidding procedures. We got four responsive bids ranging from $117,303.75 up to $168,745. It's staff's recommendation that we would go to the lowest responsive bidder, who was Piles Plumbing and Utility Contractors, Inc., and that was in the amount of $117,303.75. Council members, questions relative to this bid on the Thompson Road Water and Sewer Extension? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Worthington. Item 9B2 are bid numbers 2021-18, and this is the work out at Creekwood for the Creekwood Storm Drainage Improvement as part of the block grant that's going on over there. Mr. Worthington? Thank you, Mayor and Council. This should be familiar to most of you as we've bid it out three times now to finally get a responsive and responsible bidder. That is within the budget. Following all of our standard practices multiple times, we finally got two responsive bids ranging from $480,408 to $684,273.71. It would be staff's recommendation that we bid it to the lowest responsive bidder, who was LeKay Enterprises, in the amount of $480,408. Questions, Council, relative to this work? And it's my understanding the vast majority of this will be paid by the grant, and there is some part of this that is our city manager. That is correct, and it's my understanding, Mr. City Manager, that would come from these lost funds. Lost 18 would be the funding match. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. 9C, our ordinance is for the first reading and introduction. 9C1 is an ordinance to amend Chapter 4, Animals, relative to Unified Animal Control. Ms. Newton. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, consistent with your recent decision to transfer the management of animal control from the police department to the public works department, with this code amendment for your consideration, all it does is update two sections, 4-21 and 4-25, to put the enforce for the city manager or his designee to be the individual that would assign animal control officers and also to designate 
the individuals to actually carry out the duties of the animal control officers. Previously, that reference was to the chief of police. Thank you. Questions? Is, is that, this just out of curiosity, does that person come from, is there an animal control group of people that already do that, or are some of them, are they public works people, or did they come from law enforcement? I just didn't know. Maybe they have their own separate group. The manager may be able to speak more to this about um, animal control, but my understanding is we have two animal control officers. And so the, the code had just previously provided that an animal control officer would be an individual, and they're not um, post-certified, they're not certified officers, but an individual that would be designated to serve in that capacity by the chief of police. And so all we're doing now is to amend our code to reflect the change where we recently just changed from the chief of police managing it to have public works manage it. Um, but to basically state the city manager or his designee would be the individual to now um, designate who's going to serve as the animal control officers. Did that answer your question? I just wondered, were they just general employees or did they come from one or the other staff? Did they come out of public works or did they come out of the uh, law enforcement? Uh, or were they just general hired for animal control? That was my question. Yes. They're hired for animal control? Yes. Okay, thank you. So the only thing that changed is just the department supervision from police to public. Yeah. They're, they're currently an employee, more an employer within the jurisdiction of the police department. We just moved them over to the public work. I understood that. I just didn't know what group of where those individuals came from. Currently employed. <laughs> Uh, the DDA has recently um, obtained gap financing to facilitate downtown development from the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. And so uh, the state does require support from the city um, in the form of a resolution to move forward with that. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Item 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 are standard items on the agenda. <coughs> At this time, I'll refer you back to our pre-council agenda. Item four are council member items. Ms. Vine Gray? Chapman. Dr. Albert? No. Mr. Hunt? Mayor Brookin? No. Ms. Peter? No. Mr. King? Look. You guys can make this a real short meeting. Thank you. The real meeting. <laughs> Gilmore, do you have anything for us to speak?
So council members, as I had explained, we're, we're at a point where any topic that any one of you would like to bring up at this point in time about things of interest or things that you would like to discuss, uh, we would entertain them at this time. Believe, 
we think that there may be some issues right now because of these incremental um, modifications that Intergov, the tower technologies, the, the, uh, has been doing with Intergov, that because we are on a, 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 an older um, uh, platform, that there may be some things that are, are, are problems once we get to the actual upgrade that some of those are going to be resolved. But I also understand that we need to be working with our customers to make sure that they understand how to use um, their side of, of the program. And we're, we're certainly uh, happy to sit down with them and help them understand that. Um, so yeah, I don't think that what Robert presented last night is necessarily um, going to make any improvements on Intercut. But there are improvements that will be coming on that as part of our um, annual uh, upgrade. Well, he's a long time contractor here, here and he's young enough, not old like me, to figure out these things on the internet. Mm -hmm. Shall I sit him down and see you and you, you and he have a sit down? We can certainly do that. Me? We'll be glad to do that, Mr. Hine. And I will say that some folks love it, some folks don't, some folks just don't want to use it. Um, we've had people call us and say, can you put this in because I'm out watering my lawn and I don't want to do it. So um, this is the this is the process that we've agreed on that we are uh, we've established for the city of Perry. It, and if everyone uses it, uh, then it's going to work properly. But we'll be glad to sit down uh, with, with, with this individual and make sure that he understands how to use it. Other issues or concerns or things that you'd like to discuss as a group? I got one. Um, I don't know if this was decided or the master plan was dispersed before I became a council member, but I don't really understand or know the plan for moving out of this building or the city, current city building to who's going to the courthouse. And so I was wondering if maybe the next meeting or the next we could have a kind of a master plan bulleted items because I, I feel that once the move is made or whatever happens, it will be questioned. And I just want to be able to tell kind of what what's going on, and especially when they see work going on at the courthouse. So that's well, yeah. I'm glad you did that because it's a very we can go back and give you about six, six years worth of history or frustrating history that had everything from the city hall going to the, the state building and all that stuff. Is I just need a reader to read the digest version. Because <laughs> 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 there are plans and it'll be good when we talk about it, moving the police over the current city hall. Yeah, I just don't know. Expanding but... the fire department and all that type of stuff. It's all planned out as we move forward. The, the, Municipal court requirement that came up, what, seven, eight months ago, where it was like, well, we're going to have to go build a new $4 million <coughs> municipal court through through the uh, thought process. And about, okay, does that make any sense? So we've been working through that. But I'm just still working to give us an updated view of that. Also, want to call the uh, two police officers I saw today. After the state court, or superior court, uh, probably about 745 near well, the big public intersection. I uh, think some lady had a flat tire. They were assisting her, so that's um, positive uh, community policing, I think, or something like that. So, and it was cold. Thank you.
traumatic happening. It's not not very long before you fall over what we call the perfect trainer. And so that was so reassuring to, to everyone. And I thank you for that because I know you're the you're the leader of that group and I thank you for that. Well, thank you. I'll pass it on to the people that, that really out there doing the work. So but thank you. Okay. And, and the only other comment, kind of to follow up with what um, um, Mr. Albright was saying, was is that I feel like we need to have a strong um, stance on why an additional building uh, will be needed. I think that we, all of us will face a lot of questions from the community uh, once we move into the new courthouse building and the money is spent. I mean, the old courthouse building remodel that, and then we are going to build an additional building. I just feel like we need to be ready for that. The, the, I feel like we'll get some pushback. Well, we might, but that's why we wanted to make sure we bought the courthouse with a, a very good price. And like I said, the whole discussion started when it was brought to our attention, you're going to have to build the new system. And there's a large amount of discussion about where we can put it, they're going to be a freestanding building. So the real purchase, you know, we were going to build a brand new city hall down in the 700 block. That's when we bought the property. But then when this opportunity came on to save a great deal of money around the municipal court, the real focus was that was going to be the home of the municipal court. And then we would put some additional offices in there. So we just have to build a small building, an administrative building to have a few offices rather than building a new courthouse. I mean, City Hall. So that's kind of the thought. But we'll go through that and talk about it because it was all around money. When you say, well, we uh, we asked for an estimate from an uh, architect as to what would the minimum be as far as putting up a new municipal court that we need. And it was somewhere about three and a half to four million dollars, as I remember remember minimum that we were talking about. That's when all of us said, well, we can't do that. We got to find another solution. And so that's when we decided well, we wouldn't build a new city hall. It would possibly be uh, an administrative building, but the vast majority of the court function will be up there in the new city hall building. Sorry. Huh? What do they have at now? They're having it right here. Oh, that's right. We got thrown out of security for it. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't have the influence of Dr. Albright at that time. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll go through it because there's a long, long history with this. It started, like I said, it started five or six years ago when we were actually going to sell the city hall to the state. And so there's a long history around it, so it'd be good to, to talk about it. But it is very well thought out. I guess. And we can give you the ammunition that you need. Thank you. I have a question. Um, on Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Drive, right off from the church, <coughs> they started digging and cleaning up spots. Everybody asked me what it was for. So, have you don't want to hear it? Councilman King, the only thing that I'm aware of, and I'll, have, I'll go back and verify if there's anything else, but um, there's a house across the street from you that um, there was a special exception applied for back in uh, back in November uh, to use to use that house as a, um, a place for Alcoholics Anonymous to meet, Avalon to meet. Um, at the and when it got to the planning commission, um, we realized that the applicant had not yet obtained the property. Um, and so that um, was put on hold. Um, and that uh, we heard, um, this was last week, uh, that the applicant has now uh, been able to obtain the property. And so the, the special session will be going forward um, to the planning commission. Uh, whether or not he's doing something out there to kind of clean the property up um, now that he owns it, uh, I'm not aware of, but I'll be glad to check in that and see if there's, there's something else it's, going it's on. A lake, it's a vacant lot, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. They're, moving, they're moving dirt and everything out there. 
Guess what? It's a vacant lot. It's not the one that you're talking about. Okay. But I don't know how you're talking about it. There was a vacant lot next to it. Right. That that's what it said. Clean it off. That he also purchased. Okay. So I don't know if that's part, if he's doing something or if it's something else, but I'll check into it. Okay. Thank you. Other thoughts or comments? Um, I got caught by mass recently. When were we going into the, I uh, saw back to work on the Third Street Park. And since we were talking about uh, closing that road down there by um, Lexi Park, how soon will we begin looking at what we need to do to get that done? The crossroad parks, first question from Ms. Byron Grace, I believe. Uh, you all approved the uh, design and concept for that, and that is being handled by Ms. Fitzner. Uh, there's been some uh, beginning stages of that. I believe we're putting in some planters and planting some trees. Uh, and the rest of the work is anticipated to be done sometime, I think, this spring or maybe this summer depending on what the bid prices are that, that come in to you. On uh, the portion of Main Street that will be closed as part of phase two for Legacy Park, that is being designed right now by the engineers. They've been given the okay on that. Uh, once that project is completed with design, it goes out to bid, and then that'll be coming to you to consider for. add to that, I want to make sure everybody's aware that we're looking at the total replacement of the Hendricks Bridge. Uh, what's the time frame on it? It's like 23 or something? Yeah. yeah. And so we're working with GDOT right now and they're, they're discussing potentially raising that bridge three feet. So I think that they have made a decision on that bridge is that they're going to do one side and leave it open on the other side and then swap over when they get the new piece done because of the heavy amount of traffic that travels across that bridge is when you're talking about the fare, um, pretty well a major transportation route uh, for people going to Marshallville and things like that. So it's a heavily traveled and they uh, it made the, at first they were going to close it down completely and then detour every, everything to, I guess, over the interstate, because I think that's about the only way you can go over the river. But uh, they finally decided that no, they thought they could do it in two stages, and so that's what they're going to do. Um, Senator Walker has been working with myself, uh, asking the DOT to do several things there. One was to improve the lighting that would match up what we have in downtown and over on Courtney Hodges for that bridge. Uh, doing some type of aesthetics on the bridge itself to make it more a part of the parks rather than just a sterile bridge. And we also asked them to match up the sidewalks. When they come through with the sidewalks, we would like for that to be in the brick pattern, the striped brick pattern that we have all over town. So um, they are considering that, and so we're working through that on, on a state basis. But that is coming fairly quickly, and uh, we should be hearing from them as to whether they're going to have to raise it or not. But we had asked them for consideration if, in fact, they're going to have to raise it, would they minimize the impact that we that, that will have on Legacy Park. Because if you raise it that high, then it's gonna bring that bridge on up into that where the three roads separate. So and we're, we're working with them on a regular basis. So when you see stuff about that coming, it's, uh, it's coming at us over in the next year and a half. So they're in, they're in the major, they in the majority of their planning and design has already been done. So it's not something that they're going, well, we might think about doing this. It's something that's actually funded and they're moving forward with. So, so they 
Kevin Ward for saying. Kind of a related update on that, uh, tying the bridge project and Legacy Park together to a certain extent. You'll recall we've had conversations about Legacy Park closing Main Street, continuing the park down where Water Plant 1 currently is located. Uh, we are in the final stages of the process of closing Water Plant 1. Uh, EPD is essentially told us, okay, it's closed. We've done some physical improvements down there in regards to disconnecting it from our current water system. Uh, and we are currently working to get back to use and costs in regards to demo of that facility. Um, you'll recall, I guess it was last month or so, Mr. Gilmore had the recommendation about maintaining the historic structure that's on that site um, for some sort of City of Perry Museum. The rest of it is going to come out and basically be grass, public space type stuff. And, you know, I think. I think if Mayor had his way, we would be able to talk with GDOT about building some sort of footbridge along with their vehicular bridge um, to take us from that site over into Rotary Centennial Park. Um, that'd be, that's going to be difficult, but we would like to see that happen. It's just a vision. It's a vision. Um, so, you know, eventually at some point in time, up in the very near future, that's going to be a really nice just kind of swap of public space in the city to be very proud of. Our whole objective is if you're at Rotary Centennial Park, I personally don't want you to have to go up and get on a very, very big this bridge and walk across that bridge and then come back into the other park. It makes sense to me that if you can do it, uh, come across there with some type of footbridge that would enhance the beauty of both the parks. So I would hope that somewhere in the future we can convince them that we will not do any damage to Big Indian Creek and that bridge can be built. A large number of bigger bridges and footbridges and things like that, the walking paths have been built along and over much bigger streams than that. And so I think it's just a matter of working with them to get it. So. Striker chairs. Oh, the, the chairs to strike. She was wanting to know if you had a chance to check them out to see if they would work. I know they will work. We don't have any uh, personally in our inventory, but the ambulances do have those. Okay, what well, you don't think you might need a couple for our inventory? I can I can definitely ask for some. <laughs> I'm tagging. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you won't cost a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what they cost, but I'll, I'll I'll find out and get you a cost, and I will see if we can get some of those. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the lady at Waffle House thanks you too. <laughs> Um, I just I had another question about timing. Uh, the beautiful refresh for downtown. When when will any of that that first phase? When will that start? The what? The refresh for downtown. If you're, if you're talking about potentially changing, changing the path. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, well, there's several parts to that. First one is that. Um, we are still waiting for final input and comments from DDA and Main Street Advisory Board relative to the proposed concept. Um, once we have that set, then we'll talk about what we'd have to come back to to do some phasing. It's a very expensive project overall, and then that'll be coming back to you. Um, not quite sure yet. It's one of the things we want to do because it will have a significant impact on businesses downtown for a certain period of time, depending on when the work is done. So that's why we want to be very, very careful relative to the refresh and the schedule that, that comes in. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Brad. Okay. 
Uh, what's the current status, I guess, of the Pineville Park? Is the, the parking lot been uh, finished yet? Uh, just where are we at on that? Uh, you all awarded the bid. Right. I believe the contract has been executed, and it's within the contract or something. That correct? Yeah, it's, it's in progress. They're okay. working.
Uh, so we do not see anything immediately happening on that particular portion, but it has not been given up for it. Another question in that, uh, you know, we had talked about uh, over at Creekwood, uh, the Walker Trail coming to Tenure Park. We we're going to try to make it go to the Heritage Park, you know, go up on the interstate. Okay, yes. I know you mentioned about somebody you kind of a piece of property from someone there, you know, so we're going to stop right there at Creekwood Park, you know what I mean? You really come over here because that was the end of it. So I know we had discussed it on the way over, I remember it, but we discussed about trying to go up on the interstate and get it across Big and Hill to a Heritage Park. That'll, that'll be another walking trail that go to a Heritage Park. Correct. We have had some general concept discussions with that. We have talked with uh, a few of the property owners very, very early conceptually with that. Uh, but nothing more has been done with that. I think, if I may, the primary thing I think that will help drive that is once we actually get Heritage Park up, open, and running with whatever activity or stuff that we have. So you start getting that interest to make that connection between the two. Thank you. Vehicles. It is uh, a 
an eyesore um, for our city. So uh, I got a feeling that's not much can be done since it's somebody's property, but um, I don't know, just doesn't look good. Uh, very familiar <laughs> what you're talking about, not that I've been there personally, but from, <laughs> state, from the interstate. Uh, we will follow up on that, uh, council member. That is a very, very old industrial site that has had a number of semi-collector items there for a while. But if there is something we can do, we will. Uh, some of y'all may remember that was proposed as an asphalt plant, or no, I'm sorry, recycling plant coming in on there, and council had turned that down. Uh, and I'm not aware of anything having happened with the site after that. It continues to be a, a junkyard. Yeah. Whether there's a, a garage down there, then a junkyard, and the old concrete plant. I'm not, are they running the concrete plant? I don't think so. They have, they have the infrastructure for it, but it's not running. But different from Mr. Gilmore, I've spent a lot of time down there looking at that. It's a bad site. They might will that way. They might. They might I don't know that Mike's down there anymore. Oh, okay. I know he will that way. Yeah, but I've been down there. <laughs> <laughs> Any environmental concerns there? Sorry? Any environmental concerns there? In that, in as far as we know, not a one. Well, Fiji only have three eyes. Oh, okay. And that are in the pond. That's good. <laughs> um, Mr. Smith, I know you have an item that you'd like to bring before us. So we've, we've got about 12 minutes. Sure. I, I'm sorry. We do one thing first. Yes. Mr. Swan. Oh, yes.